Hi and welcome all to Aussie's Education Summit 2022. Today we have a very, very interesting topic uh, here today, especially for international students who have just come to Australia or are looking to come to Australia. Um, you know, so this topic is really interesting. So the topic name is get to know how or what help and advocacy is available for access for international students in Australia. And today for this session, we are joined by Ms. Michelle Orias, who is a QEAC certified qualified senior education consultant, and she has more than five years of experience as a qualified education advisor. She has helped countless students launch their courses and careers in a number of different streams. Thank you for joining us today, Michelle. Hi, Sarah. Good afternoon. And uh, before going further, I would just like to share my screen once again because we have a very, very interesting uh, giveaway contest which is going on and this is our last session for the summit. So I don't want our students to miss the chance uh, as they still can participate. So just give me a moment. I'll just share my screen. Uh, can you see the uh, bumper contest giveaway? Yes, we can, Saru. Thank you. Uh, so this is the bumper contest. Uh, basically, there are two contests going on. The bumper contest, which is share your session insight with us in a comment and story. So I'll be sharing the link for the same in the chat box very soon. What you need to do is just share uh, this post on your socials and tag Aussies group. And you need to use the hashtag is uh, education summit 2022 and hashtag Aussies group. And one of the lucky winners may be uh, will be winning a five dollars uh, amount. Uh, another one would be winning three hundred dollars, and the sec third winner would be winning a two hundred and fifty dollars. And there's another giveaway alert, basically for students who would participate in our chat box today. So we are really looking forward to your genuine feedback and some genuine questions here, which can help everybody who is present in this session. <laughs> so please do uh, ask us questions. You may um, have we have some free giveaways for you, just like PT, ILC, CL online coaching, 485 visa consultation, one time PR consultation and scholarships up to 50,000. So these offers are really great. I would request all of you to participate. Uh, tag on our socials and please do participate in our chat box today. You can ask questions. We have expert Michelle here who's been working in this industry for more than five years. And as I pointed, she has helped countless students and she would be giving us more detail about how international students these days, they can, you know, uh, find out solutions, who to approach, how to approach and what all issues they face and how they can sort out those issues. Over to you, Michelle. Thank you. Thank you very much, Saru. So just to confirm if you can see my slides. Yes. <laughs> All right, let me just set on myself. So is it all clear, Saru, from my from your end? Yes, we can see the slide. OK, um, good afternoon again, everyone. Um, welcome to the final day of Aussies Group Education Summit 2022. Wherever you may be right now listening and watching this session, I hope that you guys are all safe and sound and well. So again, welcome to this session. I am again Michelle Orias, your presenter. Um, I am one of the senior education consultants at Aussies Group. I am sitting at our Melbourne office in here in Australia, but we also have our diverse workforce in the office from different backgrounds who can assist all your careers at your level of comfortability. So, oh yeah, it's Friday, um, happy weekend. Uh, but before we can enjoy our weekend, I would like to ask you to please stay with me for this session, discussing about what help and advocacy is available for access for international students here in Australia. So again, um, as Sarah has mentioned earlier about this bumper contest, so please do so by sharing, put your feedback, and you have a chance to win exciting prizes. So moving forward, for those who intend or wish to study here in Australia, and for those who are already here in Australia who are still at lost, 
or to whom they should call or where to should or where they should go to seek for an assistance um, in every aspect of their study journey here in Australia. So this session will, will guide you and hopefully uh, this may help you as well. So in this session, we would be discussing whom we are gonna call. Not the Ghostbuster, but the right people, the right person um, who can assist us in every aspect of being a student with a provider and living and existing in the community here in Australia. So um, I guess everyone would agree with me that we love our own country, um, our origin country. Let's, let's say like for me, I am from the Philippines. I love my own country, um, not just because of the country itself, but because of the people in there, our family, our friends, um, they are our comfort zone. But at some point, we need to leave our comfort zone. We need to leave our country. We need to leave our family, our friends for self-betterment by going to another country um, for study journey. And when we are planning to move to another country, we have this expectation versus reality, I would say. Right, so we have, especially right now in social media, we have a lot of expectation. And then when we come into that point, we experience the reality. So the same go through when we process um, into becoming a student um, and coming here into Australia. We have our expectation and we have our reality, our personal and day-to-day -day experiences in real life being a student here in Australia. So at some point we experience some uh, difficulties, um, sometimes we feel happy, we feel difficulties with the home we should go and approach to for or if we need assistance. So moving forward, studying in Australia. Now, what does it entail coming and studying here in Australia? Um, living our lives in our own country, um, getting used to what we are always doing every day, sometimes it gets boring. Now, moving to Australia, like a first world country, um, with the thought of it, it is exciting and yet it could be overwhelming as well. So we, it is exciting in the sense that we want something new, we want new environment, we want independence to be living on our own. So um, yeah, so there's excitement and all, but we can also compare studying in Australia, somehow um, compare in a first world country, compared to our country, let's say for example, in a third world country, it is quite more expensive compare the rate value or the cost of living in our country. And again, studying in Australia, that would mean you'll be away from your family. And if you are away from your family and if you're going to another country, that means the first thing that you'll be experiencing is culture shocking, right? So culture shocking uh, is very self-explanatory. One, we feel that initial feelings of strangeness you get when you land into a different country. So um, you feel surprised, excited, like everything is new. Right, so a set of powerful emotional and physical effects that results from moving to another country for long term. So um, there are, I just would like to go through before getting to the, what support we can get. I just wanna go through with the stages of culture shock and how to deal with them when you are moving into a new country like Australia to begin your study journey. So for some international students may experience stages of culture shock, uh, may, may experience it and others may not really. So at first, that is what we call the honeymoon, honeymoon stage. So when we arrive in a new country like Australia, being a student, everything is exciting. Everything is new. The feeling is filled with a sense of wonder and adventure. We visit to the site, uh, we, we become like a tourist first. Enjoy. Take a photo here, snap there, post in social media. Everything is just exciting. So take the most out of it. Enjoy the life when you arrive it because at some point it will change eventually. So when you are in that honeymoon stage, so how do you deal with it? Enjoy yourself as much as you can during at this early stage. Develop connections with people who can support you during your hard days. Make friends. Make friends, make family out from that friends. 
make friends with your colleagues at school, make friends if you are able to start a new job. So make friends with them because eventually in the future, they will be your new family in this strange country. So by going out, you will create a positive point of view. So honeymoon stage is a good thing. But the next stage somehow is the difficult stage, rejection and hostility. So after you arrive at your honeymoon stage, not every, not every day you are enjoying going there, going here, you know, taking snapshots and everything. That's not the reality. So this is not the expectation and the reality. So the reality now comes in, the rejection and hostility. Built in several months, cultural differences, thinking in mind, comparing from your home country. Now this is the time you will miss your mom. Oh, I miss my mom's curry. I miss my mom's doing the laundry for me. I miss my mom doing the dishes for me. We miss all those things. We, we tend to compare um, the, the, the food, the taste um, of you know, different culture over the comfort of food that we used to have back home. So now we are feeling the differences here now. Oh, how people are being aggressive here. How people, it's hard for me to understand their language. Right? Because I'm from Philippines. We have different, um, what do you call that one? Language. When I arrive here, like, I feel shy. How to speak in English if my English is right. So I'm being, I'm being conscious when if I'm doing the right thing or if I'm speaking the right thing. So somehow you feel that in you that there's a rejection and hostility. So you began to have some negative experiences as a result of language barrier, cultural differences, and as well as the weather. You are adjusting with everything. So how to survive this part? Okay, so this is the, the most difficult stage. So hang in there. There are things will get easier. Um, don't forget that your friends and family are only phone away. So now things because of the social media, um, the platform that we're using, things are becoming easier now because we can easily communicate with our parents, which is now being advantageous. So just a snap, we can call our friends, we can call our family back home and share our experiences. And so, yeah, rejection and hostility, the second step of culture shock. Now moving forward. So gradual adjustment. From six to 12 months, you begin to feel a little more familiar with your surroundings. So you know some things already roaming around the city. So even just having on your own, you can go around, roam around without your friends. Um, you're just happy to walk around, go into some other places on your own because you get used to it, you familiarize with it already. So you already have adjustment with yourself. So things a little easier than they did before and yet you somehow still don't feel like quite yourself because it still feels a little lost and vulnerable. So again, moving forward, being alone in this strange country, it takes a lot of adjustment especially if you are used to be living with a great family back home and friends. And then you're living here alone by yourself with very few people you know and very few friends that you make. So how to progress through this stage? You may be tempted at this stage to relax and not make as much as effort to adjust. So just take it easy, right? So do not try to, to pressure yourself to, to blend in. Take it easy, be yourself, you know, um, there's no pressure on living on your own here in Australia. You can just be on your own because there, this Australia is a diverse country. It's a multi, multicultural country. So you will feel home even away from home eventually. So now the next stop is the deep adaptation. So 12 months moving forward, settling in, feeling like actually living a real life in a place that is almost home. So one year, I guess it, it becomes more on a home away from home. You, you, you adapt. Let's say for example, just to give you an example, we pronounce water in our own country. Eventually when you get to use the living here in Australia, your pronunciation change. The water become water because you adapt to it, right? So moving forward, living in Australia, so you tend to adopt. The, the way how you pronounce thing. Um, when you say afternoon, it is arvo. So you adapt things slowly, slowly. You practice acceptance, 
right? You are familiar with your host culture already and you can accept it for what it is. Because we have no choice, we have to blend in in the society where we are currently living, okay? So moving forward is the re-entry to shop. Now, after you finish your study, two years moving forward, you, you went back home in your, in your own country for a holiday. So it's the other way around here. You get used to the living here in Australia, and when you get home, back to your country, it looks a little different. So there are things that you used to know that feels now strange. So that is now the re-entry to shop. And it's just a, a cycle of a culture shock when you are moving from one place to another place for long term. So basically, when you are coming to another country, especially coming to Australia, so prepare yourself that you might be going through some sort of you know, stages of culture shock. And you know, at least now you know how to deal with it. Enjoy it. Embrace it, adapt to it, and live with it, all right? Now, a student's reaction to experience. So what's the purpose of coming here in Australia? Of course, we will be in a student's visa. So we have students' reactions to experiences. We react to experience. Since we are students, we are dealing with education provider. Education provider are your the schools that you're enrolled with doing your course. Um, Every one of us may have different experiences with our education provider. Some are very much happy and content. There are some who feel grievances at some point. So because no two individuals are the same, one student may excel and cope with challenges while the others feels the otherwise, right? So again, no two individuals are the same. Let's say for example, I am a student and you are a student. I am happy with my assessment. I believe in myself. But the teacher did not believe in me, so I feel I feel I lost my confidence, right? So I feel that you know I withdraw from that confidence. So you feel somehow grievances to yourself, like you know how can you get through this one? So um, there are effects based on personal experience on how you deal with it. Some other people, especially if it is their first time to be away from their family and they have their personal experience you know, dealing matters, serious matters in line with their studies and they cannot cope up with this, um, at some points they have the withdrawal syndrome. They withdraw from it instead of facing it because they don't know who to approach to and they don't know which help or what help they needed uh, to sort things out. So there is a positive and negative effect when it comes to dealing a personal experience. For the positive, of you have to cope with the feedback and successful assessment. For the negative for others, it tends to lead to stress, depression, withdrawal, or quit that may, may raise grievances. So only two things. If you feel happy, then you go ahead. If you are not unhappy, then you feel the negative situation, stress, depression. So again, if you feel issues about your provider, who are you going to call again this time? Again, not the Ghostbuster, but in every education providers, they have their own student support services or student welfare. As a student, you should know where to go to and who to call to. They have student support services or student welfare to discuss any study issues relating to assessment, study progress, or any grievances, bullying they feel in the corner of the school. Um, so every provider, they have their rules and regulations on how to attend their students properly. As a student, do not keep it to yourself. If you feel like you feel this way, then you just have to, communication is the key. Always communication is the key. Communicate, call, visit the campus or talk to the right person. Again, go to the student support services or student welfare. They are the right person to talk to just in case you are experiencing um, any issues relating to your study progress and assessment and or if you feel grievances or bullying at school. Now, when it comes to, you have issues about financial, um, your, your parents was not able to send you money or you were not able to earn yet to, to pay for your fees. So your salary is in the next two weeks and your juice is in next week. So um, for you not to be able to have, you know, pile up of 
penalties of your fees just in case, you can talk to the accounts team. If you want to request for delay of payment, there's it, everything can be done in dialogue and communication, right? So if you cannot pay on time, you just have to approach um, either the student welfare to connect to you to accounts team, that dear accounts team, um, I would like to request for a consideration of late payments um, for you to be considered rather than not communicating at all that could lead potentially into, you know, cancellation of your COEs that could affect your studies and visas as well. So if you are having um, issues or problem when it comes to your financial matter in paying your fees, again, things can be dealt with good dialogue and better communication. Communicate, communicate, communicate. Talk to the right people, accounts team of the school and or with the help of the student welfare. As long as you put it in writing and everything will be arranged accordingly, okay? Um, counseling department. Every education provider, they have their own psychologist or counselor. Um, at the event of lost death of a family, you're feeling depressed and how you cope with loneliness, um, every provider, they have their counseling department. You just have to arrange um, booking on, uh, you know, to have a one-on-one -on -one session. Um, having a good advice and a good cry to a trusted one can somehow ease the burden. I can, I can share my personal experience with this when I was a student my father died so i was having i was having difficulties on how to keep moving forward so what my education provider used to assist me by arranging um, at least in a month i had three time session of counseling on how to deal how i was going through just to just just to survive the ordeal so if you're having any difficulties depressions or everything you can talk to them they have their counselor at school so this so these are the right people you go to when it comes to dealing with education providers if you feel any issues so student welfare accounts team and counseling department all right now study issues and grievances so um it is not unevitable that students may feel issues and grievances at school. Uh, as we say, human is not perfect, and so providers are not perfect as well. No one, Ill, no one is perfect. So um, if we have issues about we want to appeal our grades and other assessments related decisions that you're not happy, how come your grade is just this much with, where you think you earn that much? So you can actually appeal academic standing probation and exclusion. So finding misconduct, including plagiarism, loss of submitted assessment, enrollment graduation. So release processes, change of school or change of school course, discrimination, harassment and bullying. So this, these are the common student issues. If you are, if you are experiencing this um, student issues that cannot be resolved within the education provider, the right person or the right agency to call on to is the student ombudsman. So agency to call to if issues are not settled within the education providers is the student ombudsman. It investigates complaints that international students have with private education providers. A private education provider can be a school, college, or universities in Australia. So again, if you have experience um, all these um, issues uh, with your education provider that you cannot have amend with them, uh, the, the student ombudsman can intervene the process and help the student go through it. All right. They will review the process. So services are free with the student ombudsman. Uh, they can provide you information on best practice complaint handling for private education providers. So for those uh, public providers, um, student uh, ombudsman is not into it because they're just handling with the private education providers, either college or universities here in Australia. So they can assist you if you're having issues with your education providers in line with refusing admission to a course. Like you have a very good profile and yet they rejected your they rejected your your profile because of some discrimination factor. So that's not right, 
right? So you can appeal that one to the ombudsman to be given a chance. We deserve chances, right? So fees and refunds. So if you think that you are making fees or you're, you paid your fees, but you think like you paid extra, so you deserve a refund, but the school is not giving you a refund. So again, you can discuss that matter and get support from the ombudsman. Course or provider transfer. So course or provider transfer is possible only if you go through with the right process, not instantly, I'm not happy here, I'm going out, I'm moving to another provider, that's done. Now that's not how it works. Everything needs to go to the right process. But even if you have done the right process, and even if you are eligible, but the education provider is not letting you go, then the student ombudsman can step in to help you do the right process and make negotiation with the education provider for you to be able to transfer if you are eligible or um, if you qualify for the transfer. So course progress or attendance, you were called up because of poor attendance where in fact you are actually attending school every day or every, every class schedule. So again, if things like this, like you have a good progress, but the education provider is giving you a negative outcome and you are not happy with it, then you can actually discuss things and get support from the student's ombudsman to intervene with the process and to call up the education provider to give the right decision. So they will weigh the side or the, the education provider and at the same time they will weigh the side of the, the students and whoever has the, the valid reason. Of course, the ombudsman will weigh to it and will award the right decision to the right uh, Time. So cancellation of enrollment, so certificate of enrollment or what we call COE sometimes may be canceled. Um, education provider do not just cancel COE without valid reason. But if you think your COE has been canceled without valid reason, where in fact in yourself you have the right reason, um, let's say for example, due to the death of a loved one, and then you were not able to communicate with your education provider that leads to cancellation of enrollment. So you can make appeal with that one because you have a very valid and compelling reason as to why you were not able uh, to communicate with them properly because you've been through depression, anxiety and all. So you just have to justify, you just have to give the, the right documentation as to why your COA should be reinstated and or why your COA should not be canceled. So you will be given a chance to justify yourself as to why your enrollment should not be canceled. Accommodation or work arranged by your provider. So there are some education providers who make the arrangement of accommodation. So if you are not happy with the arrangement with the provider of your accommodation and you want to, to step out from that accommodation arrangement, so it, depending with the contract, what you have agreed to, so if you are not breaching the contract then and you are happy to exit, then it could be done. But if they're breaching of the condition in the contract or agreement with the accommodation, then it needs a dialogue, right? So everything needs to go to the process. But if you think there are misconduct in the side of the provider, and if you think you are in the right side, so and um, it cannot be resolved between you and the education provider, then student ombudsman, again, can intervene with the process to help you through it, all right? Um, yeah, incorrect advice given by an education agent. So we from Lucy's group, we are an education um, agent uh, agency. We advise students um, with. We are guided. We are properly guided uh, with the uh, with our conduct and good ethics, and uh, we are trained on how to give our students the best possible um, options. So if you feel that your agencies from the past or the current agencies that who are helping you and if you are not happy with it because you feel that you were given a wrong advice that could potentially harm your future, not, um, not harm in a bad way, but could you know mislead you. So you can also ask or seek uh, assistance from the student ombudsman. So again, for any grievances that cannot be resolved with the provider, student ombudsman is the right agency to call to. All right. So moving forward, um, 
how to make a complaint with student ombudsman. So this, you can take note of this one. Um, it can only be done online. And they also have their um, uh, numbers where you can call to. Um, they're open 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday to Friday. And um, if you need interpreter, they can provide you with interpreter as well. So you can just, you just have to go to with their website. All information will be available. Right, so everything will be handy. Just go through their website, just in case you need assistance from the students and bootsman. Right, um, school education provider closures. So um, it is very seldom though, but at some point there are education provider that declares closures for some reason. Um, for whatever reason that is, um, sometimes they're not disclosing it, or sometimes it is published uh, that you know due to uh, assessment level issues, and they're they're not try, they're not able to comply with the regulations. So that's why they are declaring closure. So if the school is closing, students don't have to worry. You are not going home. You are staying in Australia. TPS or transition um, TPS is the right uh, is the right agency to 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 contact to, and they will actually intervene immediately if the school is closing. They will definitely um, contacting the students um, to help with the transition process of transferring of the course or transferring to another school. So if you experience or if you know someone experience um that their education provider declares closure so transition process changing course and transferring to another education provider the tps will assist all international students on student visas most education providers are unable to fully deliver their course of study so you are eligible to transfer to any other provider of the course of your choice right and when your visa expires because it's no longer matching with the original visa from those admissions that you have done from the closed provider then you can actually apply for another visa for free of charge because the reason of your visa extension because it's no longer matching with your course is because of the closure so again if the school closed you are eligible to transfer to any provider with a with a course of your choice so that's your advantage if you are not happy with the course that you were doing from the school that closed you can transfer to any other school with your choice with your course of interest and when you when your visa expires because it's no longer matching with the new course you enrolled then you can apply for a visa for free you just have to provide the letter from the TPS uh, that this education provider has closed, then the visa application process or the, uh, the, the visa fee itself is free for that one. So TPS framework protects international students on student visas when their provider defaults. That is their provider closes, fails to start or stops a course offering. So again, um, if you think that you paid extra and uh, the school is closing, then you are entitled for a refund as well. So TPS will actually definitely guide you through with the process. So I have helped a lot of students who have uh, experienced uh, closure from the past in which TPS, uh, they provided assistance on how to get refund from the school and um, the transcript in, uh, that they needed and also the transition of the process of transferring from one school to another. So again, from, from transferring to another, this is where education consultancy near, near you can help you. Just like us, all this group, this is our job, this is our duty to help students who are in you know, misery of transferring because at some point, many students get uh, depressed or stressed because what, what, what are we gonna do? Where are we gonna go? So again, you can contact your nearest education consultancy if you happen to be in Melbourne or in New South Wales, in West Australia, there are plenty of educa um, education consultancy where Aussie's group, you can find Aussie's group in every state. So in Melbourne, if you happen to be in Melbourne, so you can just, 
you know, visit one of our office, um, OSIS group, and we can help you transitioning, transferring from one provider to another if you experience closure of the school. So you can just contact us um, with the information provided in the screen. So education and migration agencies can help you do the process for doing readmission for change of course or transfer to another school for those students whose education provider declared closures. Yeah. All right, living in the community. So as a student, you are not just dealing with your education providers or your education issues or study journey. As a student, we are human. We exist in the community. So we're living in the community in Australia, um, in every state, Victorian state, New South Wales state, South Australia states, wherever you may be in the states. So if you feel um, any grievances or we're at points that, you know, there is an emergency, triple zero is the main number that you have to put in your mind. Zero, zero, zero. So that's triple zero. So if at the street you feel grievances or if you witness any emergency or any altercation, triple zero, stay focused, stay relevant, stay on the line. You can call triple zero, immediate help will come to your way. If someone is seriously injured or in need of urgent medical help, is your life property being threatened? Anything that links to any grievances while living in the community, Australian police will come to your way. Just call triple zero, right? So when it comes to living, most of us here in Australia, being a student visa, if we don't own our own property, or if we are not living to our immediate family or relatives, we are renting a space, we are renting a house. So we are protected. By, the res by residential um, administrative tribunal. If you are having issues with your um, landlord, with your house uh, rental issues, um, if you think like, let's say for example, you engage into a contract of one year living in this specific um, location or a property and your tenant or landlord um, wants to discontinue your contract. So in your contract, everything is guided. What, what are the do's and what are the don'ts? So if you think that there are issues that you feel like you feel aggravated within that contract binded, then you can actually call, in Victoria, it's called VCAT, Victorian Civil and Administrative Tribunal. So every state has their own administrative tribunals who can help you or assist you when it comes to any issues in line with your residential tenancy issues. So if you are having trouble with the properties and there are your, your landlord are not accommodating you well, so you can actually report it to the um, administrative tribunal um, so they can give you the right service as per the contract that you are guys binding. Right, so protection from discrimination at work. Fair work on Bootsman. So as a student, as you may all know, that being a student here in Australia, we have a part-time work right, at least 20 hours per week or 20 hours per fortnight. So as a student, um, we are able to be part of the workforce in Australia in different sectors, either in healthcare sector, uh, agriculture, hospitality, in every sector, wherever you may be, you are working. There shouldn't be, there should not be any discrimination. Maybe you are Indian, Nepalese, Pakistani, Filipino, Chinese, Vietnamese. If you are in Australia working, we are, we are treated fairly and we are protected with this fair work ombudsman. So if you think like you feel at work that you are feeling discriminated because of your race, because of your color, because of your sex or sex preference, orientation or age, um, if you feel any grievances or unfairness at work, so Fair Work Ombudsman can step in into the process, you know, to stop that discrimination at work against your employer. 
So again, the Fair Work Act prohibits an employer from taking adverse action against an employee or prospective employer for discriminatory reasons. At some point, I feel discriminated when I first arrived in Australia. I have different accents. I'm Filipino. I have a Filipino accent. So it feels like if I'm talking my own words because I was not able to adapt how to say a water in Australia, because I was still, I was still saying water. So I was somehow discriminated because of the way how I speak. But um, instead, what I did, instead of you know taking it into the high level, I, I was trying to adapt. But if it is into a severe scenario that you're being discriminated severely, then that's not a good thing, right? Then Fair Work Ombudsman can step into it. But if you think that you are not happy, it's eating your mental uh, stability, then exit from that, you know, exit from that employer. But again, if you want to stop that discrimination and to have not other people be, be treated the way you were treated, then it should be stopped. Then Fair Work Ombudsman is the right agency to call on to, to you know, to intervene and to stop any discrimination at work you should not be discriminated by any means, regardless of your or our preferences. Right? Okay, so protection from discrimination at work continues. What is adverse action? So adverse action includes doing threatening or organizing of the following, firing an employee without due process. For example, I heard, I've heard a student, ma'am, I was fired because I was absent. I was not able to give due notice at you know at the right time because of a very compelling circumstance. So um, it's okay to be given a warning, but to be firing employee without due process is wrong. Okay, injuring the employee in their employment, for example, not giving an employee their legal entitlement such as stay or leave. So we have our leave. Um, we have annual leave, we have sick leave. Um, if you want to go, if you want to apply for a sick leave, let's say today, as a, as a woman, we have our menstruation. We cannot detect that today we're having our menstruation and we declare sick leave, but your employer rejects that because you are needed at work. So it is work over your health. So you as a woman, as a woman, I want to protect my health, but as an employer, business is business. Regardless how you feel, business keeps going. They don't care about you. They don't they care about business. So that's discrimination. As a woman, you have the right to, to apply for a sick leave if you are feeling in, in pain because of menstrual period, right? So, and if you feel like it's not given to you, then that's discrimination. You should fight for your right. So again, Fair Works Ombudsman is the right agency to call on to, to stop any employer who are abusing their power being an employer. Changing an employee's job their, to their advantage. Let's say for example, you apply for, an, for a consultant, hire a consultant without, without telling you you're being demoted as a, you are just being treated or being uh, demoted to, uh, to a receptionist, which you are not signed into. So that's discrimination as well. So make sure when you enter into a contract, you know your rights, you know your position, and you know your, your, your talent, you know your ability. So stick to that, okay? So you know, you should know if you feel already being taken disadvantage to by your employers, pick up. Voice out your emotions. And if it's not done um, internally with your employer, then if you don't want others to feel the same way what you feel, then talk to the ombudsman and then the ombudsman will handle the employer. So again, Australia being a diverse workforce. So you can be joining a workforce where you will be working with different nationalities, different attitude, different life upbringing. As for myself, 
I am working with OASIS group for five years already, working with different nationalities, working majority with Indians, but I am here for five years because I know my right. I would not stay for five years if I am not happy with my workplace because I respect my employer the same way they respect me. So since I feel re respected, I am staying because I am happy. But if I feel like I'm not respected and I'm not treated fairly, then I don't think I would stay for five years. So it's as simple as that. So if you are not happy with your employer, either you exit from it, and if you don't want others to experience the way how you feel, then contact the ombudsman, fair work ombudsman, all right? So you should know who and what to call on to. Access to health services. This is getting a um, serious topic, but we're almost done. Just stay with me. So all right. Access to health services. As a student, we are um, mandatory to have a student insurance. It is called Overseas Student Health Cover. So it is mandatory when you apply for a visa, you need to have an OSHC. Overseas Student Health Cover is a mandatory requisite for all international students when it comes to applying for admissions and applying for a visa and coming to Australia. You need to have, and it is a must to have an insurance here in Australia. Why? It protects you in case of emergency, okay? Without insurance, it is expensive to get into emergency. It is expensive to get sick, but it, if you have the insurance, it gives you peace in mind that somehow as a woman, for example, if you get pregnant, how much do I have to pay? How much do we have to prepare if you don't have the insurance? But if you do have the insurance, you just enjoy the journey of your pregnancy, give birth, that's it. Because you are covered. Right, so um, it is covered 24 7 ambulance services, emergency admission. You can get 100 refund if you call ambulance, access to general practitioner. You can go to public or private practitioner um, at some point for bulk billing. You can just get in, give your insurance card, and then you get out not paying anything for some other. Um, General practitioner, especially for the private, you have to pay upfront, let's say $50, and you will apply for a refund for that. Then, yeah, so the OSHC or health services is a mandatory for all international students for your health purposes in case of emergency. So what are the needed insurance when it comes to getting student visa and admission. So we have NIB, we have AHM, Medibank, Bupa, Alliance Care. So these are the most common um, health insurance for international students where you can um, engage with for your um, insurance and health cover purposes. Okay, this, is, this would be the last topic for this session, keeping thy mental health. Um, with the pandemic, it has been declared as a pandemic, COVID-19 has been declared as a pandemic since March 2020. Since then, many has been suffering mental health issues. Worst, many have died. So how to keep our mental health during this pandemic that we have been into long-term lockdown. We are we have been into long-term isolation, right? So in life as human, we experience compelling circumstances that leads us to depression, anxiety, and other related illnesses. The weather affect pandemic. So just to give you hindsight, Australia has four weathers, but Melbourne, Sometimes in a day has a four season weather. <laughs> so um, especially during winter time, June, July, August, um, as for me, for my personal experience, winter is quite depressing. It's, you know, it's cold, it's dark. Um, sometimes it depends with the weather, your emotion, you reflect to it. So sometimes the weather affects, right? So, but at some points, unexpected um, compelling circumstances 
uh, we go through personal or inner battle. Okay. I have heard a lot recently, um, if you've heard, one of the Miss Universe representatives from the U.S. in 2019 committed suicide. So she was seen happy, she was seen bubbly, but suddenly she fell into depression. So again, as a student, it, you cannot avoid to feel lonely. You cannot avoid void to feel sad because being away from the family from the last two years we were not able to visit our family back home because of the travel restriction so many of us have developed mental health issues right so for you guys you don't have to you don't have to keep it to yourself let it out talk to your friends talk to your family but if there's no one next to you do not waste your life. We have or you have to call to the right person or to the right people or to the right community who can help you with no judgment at all. Whatever you have been through, we can get through all this, but by keeping your you know, emotions out, by talking to the right people who can give you the right advice. And that is in Australia, Beyond Blue is the place to be should be the first place every person in Australia turns to when they have mental health issue. So they have a health advocate, they have mental health advocate, they have community workers who are willing, they have counselors who are willing to listen to your, um, to your circumstance to ease the burden that you are feeling to give you the good advice on how to keep on or on how to get through life um, if you're having difficulties. So BM Blue works with the community to improve mental health and prevent suicide so that all people in Australia can achieve their best possible mental health, not just with the citizens, not just with the permanent residents, but it is open to all, especially to international students who they're being advocate with because they know that students mostly, they don't have their own family in Australia, right? So Beyond Blue is an independent, not profit organization supported by federal government and every state and territory government in Australia. So Beyond Blue also receives financial support, donation and intense support from numerous individuals corporate and non-government organizations. So they are funded to help people in need, to help people who are struggling mentally. Not, it doesn't mean that you are struggling mentally, you are crazy. That's not what it means here. You just needed help to keep going with life if you are feeling down, if you are feeling depression, if you are feeling anxiety for whatever it causes, you just need to talk to the right people to open your mind and you know to have a healthy mindset to keep going with life especially as a student it might be very hard to juggling with studies away from family um, part-time job paying fees so many things to keep up your mental health you should keep your mental health or focus positivity and to add to that Keep your physical, you know, physical balance to be physically fit, right? So I guess that would be it for today. I hope that I have given you any um, guidelines to whom we should call to if we are in, if we feel grievances in the community, in the education providers, um, insurance and everything. I hope I have guided you well. Um, should you have any questions, this is now the right time. Saru? Thank you, Michelle. You can stop sharing the screen. Thank you. And thank you for such a wonderful session. Um, I'm sure the students who are present here today would have uh, really enjoyed the session because I thoroughly did. Um, because you shared such uh, useful insights for students, you know, not only uh, with the education providers, the issues that they face, but as an international student, the issues that they face in general, in the community, in their own personal life, as well as professional life as well, you know. So uh, 
I'm sure all of you would have enjoyed this session and there was just one student who asked a question that she joined in late and she wanted a link for the recording. So all of these sessions are being recorded and will be available on our main event page. I've shared the link here as well of our main event page. So all these recordings will be available from next week onwards. Uh, but still, if you have any questions, we still got four minutes. So please put in your questions in the chat box here so that um, our expert Michelle, she can um, give her uh, advice. And plus, please, we are looking forward to your genuine feedback. Uh, it is really, really appreciative of you to join us here today to be a part of our education summit. I mean, this was our, one of our last sessions. Uh, so the education summit is just coming to end. Uh, now these five days have been really, uh, you know, uh, full of knowledge, full of uh, informative sessions. And thank you all of you for joining us and being with us for all these five days. Uh, it is because of you our education summit has become a huge hit. So we would really love your genuine feedback. I've shared a link in the chat box. Please click on that link and give your feedback as to how this session was what you would like to see in our upcoming events because we have will be having all these events, you know. Uh, more regularly uh, any suggestions any feedback any ideas uh, or any other sessions uh, or any information which you would like to receive uh, we would really uh, like your genuine input uh, so that we can include uh, you know sessions that you want in our upcoming events and once again thank you for joining us today and a uh, very good evening uh, to those who are in melbourne at the moment and have a good weekend it's friday uh, so yeah let the party begin <laughs> Happy weekend, everyone, and thank you for staying with us. Thank you. Hey!